Okay, I'm having a second talk here with Christian Ender from uh, BTCX, and this is about um, AML laundering prevention software, which grew out of uh, an exchange he had, or sort of an exchange of brokerage in Sweden. There's another whole video describing the history from him doing that from 2010 to 2021 when he went public. And uh, now we're going to talk about, hey, um, Mika, and what kind of tools do you need for that? And how do you prevent uh, money laundering? And you know what kind of software did he uh, create it? Okay, we, we discussed that you started uh, selling uh, selling Bitcoin for Swedish crones, and, yeah. and you, we went through all the the winters and the uh, all the winters and the and the hypes. And uh, at a certain point, you described you went public uh, last year in 2021, and you also uh, started to make AML software. What, how did that come about? So basically, we we notified uh, or or saw a need from the market, um, especially when new companies come into the crypto space or Bitcoin space, they're not so knowledgeable in how to deal with uh, crypto regulation or crypto anti-money laundering, uh, and. Uh, uh, so a, a big gaming company, one of the Europe's biggest gaming company, they had an NFT launch uh, last year and they got problem with their bank because they got a lo lot of money from that. And we realized... Yeah, so they made money with uh, launching an NFT yes. as a normal gaming company. Yeah. They got a whole bunch of money uh, from all kinds of Ethereum transactions which, yes. which came in. And they basically said, hey, uh, we want to, uh, they went to you for you to, for example, to sell Ethereum and put it in their bank account and the bank and the bank says, when money came from you to the bank, they, to the bank we didn't want to have it or how does it work? Yeah, so, so basically the bank asked where the money comes from and they said from uh, NFT sales yeah. and they said, no, no, we can't accept that. But the money came from you, right? I mean, you were the one who did the exchange for from Ethereum to to Swedish crones, or was it that they use a separate company for that? So that was not the issue where the ma the fiat money came from, but the issue was where the 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 um, crypto came from. Yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, the bank uh, when they when they first they exchanged it from Ethereum to Swedish crones, and uh, then wanted to, to and then wanted to and uh, to euro, and then they wanted to drop it into a bank. Yes. And then. They said, hey, this euro thing, where did this money come from? Yes. Oh, it comes from crypto. Yes. And we did, we, at this exchange, we changed it from euro to, uh, from euro to, from, uh, from Ethereum to euro. And then the bank says, hey, we want to know what that crypto money came from. Exactly. So then the, the company came to us and said, we, we need some um, uh, analysts, uh, uh, analytics from yeah. the crypto. Mm -hmm. And uh, since we, we, been doing this for several years we said yeah sure no problem okay so you already put that when you, when people come to you and basically put say hey here's bitcoin and i want to change or ethereum and i want to change it to fiat you already tracked it on the on the chain of where that money came from yes so we have to monitor all transaction uh, both in fiat and, and in crypto yeah. so that is more or less uh, automated in our systems um, so what we did when this external customer came we we built uh, like a, a spin-off system of yeah. our already existing one and made it uh, available through a API. Yeah. So how talk about uh, money uh, anti-money laundering software? What what does it do? I have a train. I, I basically give you my Bitcoin address. Yeah. And then what do you do with that? And what information do you get out of that? Yeah. So basically, since the blockchain is public, you give us an address and we can see all the other addresses that you have interacted with. Mm -hmm. And all the governments all over the world, they provide you with blacklisted uh, wallet addresses. So then we screen if, if you have a match with any one of these. And then uh, you could also uh, do uh, entity screening, meaning that let's say you're, you're a Russian ex exchange. Yeah. Uh, so we know what addresses that is associated with that exchange mm -hmm. and we can see if if your wallet is associated with with any of those addresses since russia is now in in a complete sanction from eu mm -hmm. uh, we we add have to add that as well yeah. so if i have in my past in the last five years have with my bitcoin errors interacted with russian uh, with Russian uh, uh, exchanges, like maybe three years ago when everything mm -hmm. was legal, am I in trouble now? Uh, no, you you. If it's three years ago, yeah. then it's fine. Okay. But you will still hit the flag, mm -hmm. like oh, you have interacted with Russia. Yeah. So you will have you you will get a higher risk score, 
but you will be accepted. Okay. But if you did it yesterday, yeah, go then. Yeah. Okay. Then it will be yeah, you're in trouble. Yes. Okay. So, and there's a whole. Every government is providing blacklists. You said. I mean, this is like a huge amount of. Must be a huge mess, of you know, of very valid information and very invalid information. So most of the list are just names, like names and addresses of people and entities you're not allowed to interact with. But some governments also provide crypto addresses, yeah. like America, uh, uh, UK. Uh, so then we, 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 we import that as well. Okay, but there's hundreds of millions of people who have Bitcoin addresses. And how many of those do you have a name with? So we, yes. In, in 2022, right? I mean, before you could say, I'm uh, Pipo, I'm uh, Pipo the Clown, I'm, I'm just nobody, and, uh, and, and you could buy or sell Bitcoin. There was no association with Nethers. How much, how much connection is there now um, in 2022? So from, from our pers perspective, we have like, we, we just know the names of our own customers. Of course. Yeah. But the government have a different database, so yeah. they have much, much more information. Uh, and and they, are, they are constantly digging for new, more and more information. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, but you do not know that. You download the chain, yeah. you know, the, the blockchain, and you have a whole bunch of transactions. Those are just numbers. How do you now, how do you now check if these numbers are associated, associated with names which uh, are not allowed? So that, that can, we, we cannot check that. So what we can check is uh, IP addresses, uh, and we can check... Uh, entities, known entities yeah. that the vault have been associated with, but we cannot check the name and address. Yeah. So, how? What percentage of the hundreds of millions of Bitcoin addresses, on, on Bitcoin only? I mean, just mm -hmm. forget about Ethereum, but Bitcoin are known addresses, are known entities, are known IP numbers, are in some way can be traced back to something you know that you can judge. I would say it's quite a quite many addresses that are associated with something. And How many? Uh, if I just want to grab a number, I, I would say that, let's say 20% of all addresses okay. are uh, associated, associated with yeah. something. Uh -huh. But it could be up to 50. Yeah. And then there's a, f and so that's 20 to 50, but they're not in your database normally. No, 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 that, no, is, that is something there with government. So that doesn't mean you can still, that you can check check it there I mean that's that's very no, hard no, exactly so so what, what we I mean we, we can only check the address itself is more or less anonymous yeah but what, what it's interacting with that's easy to track oh yeah so one with a lot of them in the, the one degree second degree third degree yes. and then slowly you see a picture and slowly exactly. you can make a score and sort of yes okay and then there's of course a whole bunch of um, a whole bunch of hacked uh, stuff yeah. Right, like yeah. Mount Cox and yeah. all the other, and every day, I mean, we have a different kind of hack. Yeah. Is there also lists from that? Are yes. are, are all the official exchanges yeah, also yeah. making lists yeah. of that? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that 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 information we just take from the news. You you can see like, if there's a hack going on, you see what address, and you instantly get that address in your blacklist and all the addresses it is associated with. So then you, um, so that in that way we protect ourselves from accepting stolen crypto. Yeah. Is there a some kind of a centralized list or a list which everybody works and enhances store? Because I mean, I can imagine everybody has an interest to prevent hacked addresses, and that there should be somewhere some <laughs> register, some blockchain register yeah. of okay. hacked addresses. So do you, do you, is there anything, or is it all more? Every exchange has their own IP, has their own. Bitcoin addresses or Ethereum addresses and you just have to collect them and hope for the best? So I, I would say the most centralized uh, register there is is when you, if you're using one of those bigger um, crypto analytic uh, companies like yeah, Binance or something. No, 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 it's more like score, uh, uh, Chainalysis and Elliptic because they have been harvesting addresses and information for oh, years. Okay. But when it comes to like pure hack uh, there's no, I mean, there's no like, oh, this is the list we uh, cultivate. It's like ev everyone does it there themselves. And I think it's good to have it decentralized because if you have a, a centralized list of uh, addresses that are uh, either stolen or illicit in some way, who is going to be the judge? 
So it's, it's, it's better that each and every one make their own decision and you, that you don't have a centralized blacklist. Wow. You know, but I'm having an exchange. I, I basically do an exchange. I basically, you, you, you basically judge me, right? You have yeah. some kind of bit. Yeah. And you say, flag. Okay, yes. the guy is flag. And, I, and something doesn't work because, I mean, suddenly I, I get refused. Yeah. And it doesn't tell me.